We've built a lot of wind farms, a lot of solar farms uh, during the life of this government and over the course of the last few years. But it is a highly contentious area. Whilst there are no solar farms inside the city of Worcester, there are in Worcestershire, and there's just been approval for a solar farm of 96 acres in South Warwickshire. And it's led to, as you would expect, some very big divisions within the council. Now, Stephen Norrie is chair of Stratford Climate Action. And Stephen, you are very much in favour of this solar farm. I understand that. I understand why you think net zero is a very important thing for us to get to. Let me just put this to you, that actually probably the last thing we should be doing, and the Ukraine war perhaps has brought this home to us, isn't the last thing we should be doing, taking agricultural land out of food production at a time when we need both food security and energy security? Wouldn't it make more sense to farm that land and to start fracking for gas in the north of England so that we've got the backup that we need if things go wrong? Well, I mean, actually, this land is not currently being used for food production for, for people. It's been used to, to produce animal feed. And, well, and, it, but that's still agriculture. It is still agriculture. And, 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 and people eat animals. This does come into the issue about uh, animal agriculture and, and net zero, because animal agriculture is a very inefficient way ah. of producing food. So should, should we stop eating beef? Uh, yes, okay. essentially. OK. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 let him speak. Let, it, let him speak. OK. Um, I mean, of the calories that an animal eats, only 10% of those are turned into calories you know, through meat and dairy. Um, the rest of it goes into the animal walking around and eating and, and doing those things. So uh, about, around half of, of arable land in, in the UK is currently being used to produce animal feed. Okay. Um, so if we're looking at um, needing to, to, to reduce... Uh, you know, to, to save land, to, to, to produce more food, really what we should be doing is... I'm, I'm not saying maybe we, we, we can't problem. eat beef, but we should be reducing but, but beef. Stephen, isn't the problem here that, in reality, groups like yours want to fundamentally change the way we live? You'd rather we didn't have motor cars. You don't think we should get aeroplanes away on holidays. I mean, you know, if we go for your green mm. ideology, we're going to finish up with a diminished standard of living. I don't think people want that. Well, I mean, we did a bit of research during the, the, the pandemic, which was obviously a very tough time for everyone. This is the first pandemic during the, the lockdown. Um, we, we did a bit of lo local research and we asked people, you know, what has been the toughest thing for you about the, the lockdown and what's been the best thing for you about the lockdown? And, you know, the results were pretty startling. I mean, most people said the toughest thing was we can't see our families. We want to see our families, we want to hug our families and sure. things like that. But people did say, well, we really like the fact that there aren't cars on the road. We really like the fact that we can breathe the air ah. and we can taste fresh air. We, go got, back, we like the fact we that... we go back and live in come... caves, Stephen? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that where we're really going with this? Well, I mean, if you, if you um, change the, the, the transport system so that the people are, are, are cycling more, so that uh, you've got more electric vehicles, so you've oh, got more public I, transport... I like my car. <laughs> well... I enjoy driving my car. There are 36 million of us in this country that drive cars. Look, isn't the truth of it? I understand what you're saying. And, I mean, I, you know, do you, do you go along, by the way, with this sort of apocalypse vision? There was a, a book review. It's called An Inconvenient Apocalypse. It appeared in The Guardian today. And the authors say the only way that, 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 that the world can survive is if we shrink the population by two or three billion. I mean, is that the agenda? No, I don't really go along with that. I, I think um, population is going to have a very limited effect on, on emissions. Really, the, 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 the issue is, is life. Isn't population rise across the world the biggest factor in all of this? No, it's not. I mean, you can really? look at some of the simulation um, programs that you, you, you get on the computer. En-ROADS is a program we use, and it allows you to, to play around with the all different right. variables. So it allows you to play around with your diet, with re renewable energies, and whack those, those numbers up and down. Population has very limited impact. Right, I don't agree with that, but that's fine. And a, a final big thought. Mm -hmm. All these people in this room have all been paying subsidies, 25% subsidies on their electricity bills for green and renewable and social obligations. Mm -hmm. We've been taxing these people to give money to rich landowners, foreign multinationals and Chinese companies manufacturing wind turbines, all in the name of getting down to net zero, we as a country produce less than 1% of global CO2. Mm -hmm. China 
built 80 big new coal-fired power stations last year. Is it fair that these people are paying the price and the Chinese just laugh at us? Well, I mean, there's two issues there about, about the, the green levies and about the Chinese. Um, the, well, the Chinese aren't doing any of this, are the, they? The, 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 the green levies, I mean, 25% is from last year. It's 12% this year with the price rises. So Millions of pounds of money from ordinary folk has gone to the rich yeah, through this I mean, scheme. The, the, this is £157 pounds on the average bill. Oh, nothing. The, the price rises that we're seeing in energy are 96% from the wholesale cost of gas. Yes, and if we produced our own, it wouldn't be as bad as that, would it? Well, if we'd gone pure renewable, which is much cheaper to produce than gas... But renewable, it doesn't, it doesn't give you consistent energy. It's intermittent. Well, I mean, if you produce enough of it, then you can produce green hydrogen to balance the... Which no one's yet mastered. And do you know what? If they do, I might change my mind. If they actually get to that, I might change my mind. Meantime, I won't. But I want to say to you, Stephen Norrie, you and I don't see eye to eye on this, but thank you for coming on and showing this audience your passion for this subject. Thank you very much.